hi this is polyben teaches where learning meets curiosity and i am sagarika banerjee today we are going to delve into the timeless poem the lake isle of ainsbury written by a famous poet w b yeats so in this poem we are going to know about the rich imagery used by the poet the themes of nature and solitude and the poetic devices used by the poet in the poem the lake isle of ainsbury so join me to explore all this in this video and make sure to watch this video till the end and do share your comments in the comment section so let's start so in this video in the beginning i am going to tell you some information i am going to share with you some information about the poet w b yeats so his full name was william butler yeats and the years are 1865 to 1939 he was a renowned irish poet a dramatist and a significant figure in the world of literature he was one of the most famous poet of his times in the especially in the uh, 20th century he was awarded with the nobel peace uh, nobel prize in literature in the year 1923 for his inspired poetry which gave voice to the spirit of an entire nation so and he is also known for emphasizing his rich irish heritage and his affinity his uh, longingness for nature and mysticism now this was all the information about the poet now coming to the this specific poem lake isle of ainsbury this poem the lake isle of ainsbury is one of his most famous poems reflecting his longingness for peace and tranquility away from the materialistic world so this poet actually wants to go away from the materialistic world and he wants to spend some days in the nature in the midst of nature and that is the reason he has written this poem now to begin with we will now first of all just understand the type of poem written by the poet so this lake isle of ainsbury is a lyrical poem written by w b yeats and this expresses the poet's deep longing to escape the hustle and bustle of the city life and return to the tranquility of nature right the poem also describes the poet's desire to retreat to the peaceful setting of the ainsbury the poem captures the poet's yearning for a place where he can find inner peace and connect with the nature ainsbury is a symbol of his ideal place his ideal retreat and escape from the reality so somewhere the theme also relates to the theme of escapism in this poem so let's just read the poem first and then i will explain you the poem line by line i will arise and go now and go to ainsbury and a small cabin built there of clay and wattle smith nine bean rows will i have there a hive for the honey bee and live alone in the bee loud way and i shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow dropping from the wheels of the morning to where the cricket sings there midnights all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evening full of linnets wings i will arise and go now for always night and day i hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore while i stand on the roadway or on the pavements green i hear it in the deep hearts go so in the first stanza if i talk about i will arise and go now and go to inisfree and a small cabin built there of clay and wattle smith nine bean rows will i have there a hive for the honey bee and live alone in the bee loud play so in the first stanza the poet yearns for a peaceful retreat 
in nature away from the busy life of the city and innisfree is presented as an ideal place where he can find solitude inner peace and he emphasizes the theme of escapism in him and the allure of the nature simplicity so is first stanza bhi wo keh raha hai ki wo jana chahta hai ek aisi jagah mein jo ki innisfree hai aur he is saying i will arise and go now and go to innisfree the poet declares his intention to leave immediately ye jo go word hai na that symbolizes uh, symbolizes to leave that place that city immediately and to his desire to reach that place in his free immediately and there the repetition of the go emphasizes his eagerness and then he says that he will build a small cabin wo ek chhota sa cabin banayega which will be of clay and wattles in sab cheezon se wattles are woven sticks तो इन इनसे वो एक छोटा सा घर बनाएगा वहाँ पर केबल बनाएगा एंड दिस इंडिकेट्स इज डिज़ायर फॉर अ सिंपल लाइफ सिंपल लाइफ फ्रॉम द अवे फ्रॉम द सिटी लाइफ द मटेरियलिस्टिक वर्ल्ड नाउ देन एन अदर लाइन इज देयर नाइन बीन रोज विल आई हैव देयर अ हाई फॉर द हनी बी ही इज आल्सो सेइंग ही इज इमेजिनिंग दैट ही विल बी प्लांटिंग सर्टन बीन रोज और वो ऐसे ही रैंडमली कह रहा है कि छोटा सा गार्डन होगा जिसपे वो बीन रोज लगाएगा एंड देर विल बी हाइव हाइव फॉर बीज एंड बीज हाइव रहेंगी एंड लिव अलोन इन द बी लाउड ग्लेड एंड हियर ही इज एम्फोसाइजिंग ऑन द साउंड ऑफ द बीज सो ही इज सेंग दैट देर विल बी अ साउंड ऑफ बीज ओवर देयर बीज दे विल बस ओवर देयर दे विल हम देयर the humming sound of the bees will be there so this expresses the usage of onomatopoeia it's a poetic device used by the poet in this line be loud glade and he is uh, he says that that sound that humming sound of the bees will actually soothe the entire atmosphere over there now coming to the second stanza and i shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow dropping from the wheels of the morning to where the cricket sings there midnights all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evening full of linnets wings now in the second stanza the poet is desiring for a place where he can witness the beauty of nature okay so he is saying and i shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping snow the poet believes that on ins free he will finally experience some peace but although he knows that the peace comes gradually dheere dheere peace aati hai shanti aati hai to wo keh raha hai wahan ja ke ins free mein ja ke use finally kuch shanti milegi kuch peace milega jo use pata hai dheere dheere hi aati hai just like the morning dew जिस तरीके से मॉर्निंग में ड्यूज धीरे धीरे आके ओस की बूंदे गिरती है वैसे ही उसे पीस मिलेगी एंड ड्रॉपिंग फ्रॉम द व्हील्स ऑफ द मॉर्निंग टू वेयर द क्रिकेट सिंग्स एंड ही इज आल्सो एम्फोसाइजिंग ऑन द सिंगिंग ऑफ द क्रिकेट्स सो ही इज सेइंग ही कैन आल्सो हियर द साउंड ऑफ द क्रिकेट सिंगिंग देयर मिडनाइट ऑल मिडनाइट्स ऑल अ ग्लिमर एंड नून अ पर्पल ग्लो द पोएट हियर सेज that midnights all a glimmer to evoke an emo- image of stars stars shining in the sky shimmering in the sky wo ye bhi keh raha hai ki raat ke time mein sham ke time mein aasman mein taare chamkenge aur din mein noon ke time mein there will be a purple glow so he is actually describing the beauty of the that place and uh, in such a way that he makes the readers to be there to visualize and be there in that place so this line captures the ethereal and dream like quality of his film where even time seems to hold a magical quality and then he says an evening full of the linnet's wings the mention of the linnet a small song bird linnet kya ek chhota sa song singing bird 
सो दिस सिंबोलाइज द लाइवलीनेस ऑफ द नेचर कि नेचर वहाँ जीवित रहेगी यानी कि लाइवली रहेगी सो ही विल नॉट बी फीलिंग अलूफ और लोनली देयर ही विल बी इन द मिड्स ऑफ नेचर ही विल बी हैविंग पीस बट एट द सेम टाइम ही विल नॉट बी फीलिंग टू बी लेफ्ट आउट द फ्लटरिंग ऑफ द लिमिट्स वींग्स एड्स टू द साउंड स्केप ऑफ इंडस्ट्री मेकिंग द आईलैंड फील अ लाइफ with gentle natural sounds now this was the second stanza coming to the third and the last stanza i will arise and go now for always night and day i hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore while i stand on the roadway on or on the pavement's grave i hear it in the deep heart scope so in this the poet is saying that in the first line of this stanza i will arise and go now for always night and day the poet is saying is giving his determination he feels totally determined to leave that place and go to that um, place that is industry so he is he is determined to leave for industry and the word always suggests that he desires to go to that place industry and it, it has a deep longing he had a deep longing to go there so he has finally been determined to go there now the next line in this stanza is i hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore this line brings the reader into the sensory experience of this thing ye jo water lapping with low sounds ki awaaz jo poet ne is line mein di hai इससे जो है ना वो रीडर को एक विजुअलाइज करा रही है करा रहे हैं कि पानी की जो मूवमेंट है उससे जो आवाज आ रही है कल कल पानी की जो लहरों की आवाज है दैट दैट रिजेंबल्स द दैट इज एक्चुअली द ऑडिटरी इमेजरी इसे हम ऑडिटरी इमेजरी कहते हैं क्योंकि ये इस इमेज में आप ऑडियो भी सुन पा रहे देख पा रहे और इमेजिन कर पा रहे सो दिस टाइप ऑफ विविड डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दैट लेक इज गिवन बाई द पोए वाई लाइ स्टैंड ऑन द रोड वे और ऑन द पेवमेंट स्क्रीन तो द पोएट इज सेम द कॉन्ट्रास्ट बिटवीन द नेचुरल ब्यूटी ऑफ इंडस्ट्री एंड द डल एंड लाइफलेस सराउंडिंग्स ऑफ द सिटी लाइफ जहाँ वो पेवमेंट में खड़ा हुआ है एंड द सिटी इज फिल्ड विद noise no peace is there the poet is physically standing on the highway or on the roadway and he is mentally into in that place that is the place of the lake ida of inisri i hear it in the deep heart scope the poet is saying that while standing on the pavement in the city in the busy city he his heart is there in the island of inisri तो वो सिटी में खड़े होकर उस पेमेंट में खड़े होकर उस फिजिकली तो खड़ा हुआ है लेकिन मेंटली वो महसूस कर रहा है कि वो वहाँ पर उस इनस्ट्री आइलैंड में मौजूद है सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द पोएम द लेक आई ऑफ इंडस्ट्री सो दैट सॉल्व फॉर टुडे आई विल आल्सो ब्रिंग नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन द पोइटिक डिवाइस यूज इन दिस पोएम एंड द कॉम्पिटेंसी बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आस्ट फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर पोइम तो मेरे नेक्स्ट वीडियो के लिए वेट करिएगा और उसको देखिएगा जिसमें मैं पोइटिक डिवाइस इस पोएम में से डिस्कस करूँगी आपको बताऊँगी और कॉम्पिटेंसी बेस्ड क्वेश्चन जो आजकल सी बी एस ई में हाईली डिमांडेड है वो कॉम्पिटेंसी बेस्ड क्वेश्चन किस तरीके से इस पोएम पे बन सकती है वो भी आपसे डिस्कस करूँगी टिल आई ब्रिंग मोर वीडियो बाय बाय